struggle can either form us or it can deform us. We all know what it means to live lives in a world that is anxious, fearful, under great stress and endlessly driven. In our families and among our friends, there are so many who suffer from desolation, from desperation, feeling lost and depressed. Lent is an opportunity for each one of us to walk with Jesus into the desert of our own lives so as to find consolation, authenticity and peace. Crossing this desert and learning to let go, to see clearly and to live simply, this is the way of the desert fathers and mothers who have shown us this path from the 4th century. As the author of Crossing the Desert, Robert Wicks reminds us that learning what not to take is as important as what to take on this journey. This is often a who that we need to let go of, those who pull us down, hold us back, and bind us to all that is destructive in our lives. The journey of our transformation into the desert requires inner freedom, centered on spiritual wisdom and compassion, moving away from erratic, self-serving and undisciplined lives towards single-heartedness, purity of heart and peace. The desert Abbas and Amas followed the road of being desert apprentices, always beginners, for the purpose of being spiritual mentors, becoming for others that healing presence through the listening spirit that we are all called to provide to each other. Happiness consists in finding out precisely what the one thing necessary may be in our lives and in gladly relinquishing all the rest. For then, by divine paradox, we find that everything else is given to us together with the one thing that we needed. Jesus, in the line of sages and prophets before him, constantly withdrew into the wilderness for silence and solitude. Jesus' priority for solitude and silence are to be found everywhere in the Gospels, from the beginning of his ministry to every important decision. It was in solitude and silence that Jesus dealt with painful emotions like grief, the constant demands of his ministry. Silence and solitude was how Jesus cared for his own soul and how he taught his disciples, and finally, how he prepared for his own death on the cross. For Jesus, the wilderness was a place of preparation, a place of making decisions. In the kingdom of this world, it is greed, power and prestige that rule a world of domination, as we see in the temptations of Christ. In this worldly kingdom, there are all kinds of distinctions created by our human society. Age, wealth, fame, public image, all these rankings that we use to slot people into. Nearly every society in the history of the world has developed its own class or caste system. Circumstances of birth, wealth, privilege and education have divided men and women from each other. This is the kingdom of the world as opposed to God's kingdom. The reality of the desert teaches us about the necessity of relationships, the necessity of hospitality, and the necessity of compassion. It is only within this vision that we can reevaluate our own lives and un- come to understand what stands in the way of our own inner freedom. The approach of the desert mothers and fathers was the way of ordinariness, practicing sound knowledge to come to full wisdom, so as to attain their full humanity. Thus they created for themselves a pure space, uncontaminated by insecurity, self-interest, pride, and those many other inner demons that plague us. The one thing that stands out as a light in all of their lives, in them there was no guile to be found. Their lives were transparent and free. Their words were never twisted or used in any way of dominance. 
There was never any sarcasm, clever wit of philosophy. Their word was their word. In this way of simplicity, they discovered their own authentic humanity that led them to live lives that were filled with compassion and a gentility in their dealings with others. This was the way that St. Francis also found centuries later. There can be no trace of clever trickery in the recovery of our authentic humanity. Returning to our true humanity in this little way of ordinariness, they found the strength to overcome prejudice, defy compulsions, and strike out fearlessly into the unknown. May the Lord continue to walk with each one of us as we journey into the desert this Lent. May the Lord grant you peace.